subject to human rights. So I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm going to tell a story. Let's keep it a little simple there, because... Uh, do I know what side I'm on here? No, I probably don't. Um, I first came across Dorje Shugden when I was doing my doctoral work in Ladakh in 1993. If you don't know where Ladakh is, here's a map of India. Uh, the little square up here is uh, the state of Jammu and Kashmir. And Ladakh is an area of India that abuts onto the Tibetan Plateau. And since 1842, when it came under the Maharaja of Kashmir, uh, has been effectively speaking part of what is now modern India. So it's a bit of Tibet that is part of India. It's important to note in that sense that for a couple of hundred years, it was not under the jurisdiction of Lhasa. Okay? It's not traditionally under the jurisdiction of the Dalai Lamas. Um, and it's an area which nonetheless is very important, particularly to the diaspora of Tibetan Buddhists, because it is a crucial area in which Tibetan Buddhism has flourished and maintained itself for a thousand years, largely uninterrupted by Chinese invasion or anything of that nature. Um, yes, next slide. Um, the work that I did, initially rather naively, I went and did my PhD. I wanted to write a book about a Tibetan monastery and how they work. I'm an anthropologist. What we do when we do that is we go to a place, we dig in, we ask lots of favors, and we stay put for, in my case, one and a half years. And I lived um, in this monastery here. Um, I shan't name it because we won't go there, um, but you know, uh, if you read my book about it, you'll know where it is. If you read my most recent article that you can find on the web, then you know, you'll know all of this. But I don't want to get bogged in down, in down those particular details. Um, this is Gulukpa Monastery. It belongs to Nairi Rinpoche. It is part of a series of monasteries that belong to Nairi Rinpoche, who's the Dalai Lama's younger brother, that are in Ladakh. Um, as you can see, it's in a rural area. At this point in time, it was seven days' walk from the nearest road. Rather unhappily, it's now four days' walk, four hours' walk from the nearest road, which is a shame. Um, and uh, it's a Gulukpa monastery. It was founded by Changsen Sheram Sangpo, a little after Tsongkhapa. Um, and they extraordinarily kindly put me up for six months uh, while I stayed and studied their rituals and, and, and did all of those things. Um, <coughs> A crucial part of this, next slide, well, I'll say a crucial part, a part of this was the fact that it was a Gelug monastery in 1994 that had Dorje Shulten as a worldly protector. Now, I, I'm going to say that bit here because that's an important, crucial distinction. For the, from the NKT's perspective, Dorje Shulten is a wisdom book. Okay. From most, from the Daki's perspective, he's what's called a Jitinpila, a worldly deity. He's, he hasn't achieved enlightenment. But those two things often go together, um, and they are kind of put together under that word, Dorje Shugden. And I, I don't want to get bogged down in the theology of that because that would go on forever. Um, he's a very high. He was a very high-ranking protector, and regularly possessed um, a, a, a Ladaki oracle. Um, I shan't give his name. Let's not go there. Um, who um, was an army man who became regularly possessed from about the age of the late 20, in his late twenties, um, and there was a very long process of, of, of choosing him and finding out who he was being possessed by, and um, and what he did in this case was it was he was seen as being possessed episodically um, by either Dorje Shukdun or by his minister uh, Kachimapo, and. Um, he would, as you can see, kind of wear the uh, appropriate robes and everything on those lines. Um, because Dr. Gelsen was famously and uh, theoretically either died at his own hands or was murdered by having prayer scarves stuck down his throat, um, the oracle will put into possession by garroting himself with prayer scarves. Um, it is, I must admit, particularly this possession here, which is the first one I ever witnessed of many, uh, and I interviewed the oracle and everything. Um, it's a terrifying thing to see. When someone goes into full possession, this gentleman, it looks like every bone in his body dislocates at once. Um, it is deeply persuasive in a physical way that something is happening that, as an anthropologist, we don't understand yet, and we should probably get on with that. Um, 
Shugden was one of 11 protectors of this monster. He was one of two wealthy protectors. The other one was a local god called Shachotsvan. Um, and I, I think it's important to note that. We stand at the moment, and particularly in Britain, in a situation that says the world is divided into people that follow the Dalai Lama and people that are Shugden person. This lot here would never call themselves Shugden person. They would say, we have a worldly protector for our monastery, and we have two. And both of them are possessed by oracles, and often those two oracles will go into possession together. In that sense, and they would sit there and say, who said, who's the protector? They would say, a real one, uh, you know, maybe Vajraberada, you know, maybe Mahakala, you know, maybe one of the other 11. But if you said, are you a Shugden worshiper? They would go, that doesn't make sense to them. Um, in particular, if you ask them, they would say, this is a worldly deity, and therefore it is a Rokspa. It is a helper. Um, the, one of the things they say in Ladakh is, Lama Yoga. The Lama is higher than the gods. It's a very common saying. The Lama is higher than the gods. And in that sense, they wouldn't kind of define themselves in those terms. They also regularly, I hasten to add, put the Dalai Lama and Shugden together. They understood that the Dalai Lama had strong views on the matter, but they had a monastic protector. They followed the Dalai Lama. Monlam Chenmo in 1993, for example, they brought out a big photograph of the Dalai Lama. Everyone in the village, um, everyone in the village prostrated before it and prostrated before the tormas, which included the tormas of the sort of votive offerings, which included a torment to Shugden. And the Shugden oracle was there. These things went together. So our present state of deep polarization that occurs, particularly from the British perspective, is not one that is shared by Ladakis. They didn't think about it that way. Now, um, next slide. Ladakh was an area of proselytization that was, began to become influenced by the politics that surrounded Shugden in Dharamsala and, and many of the refugee communities. Um, this is Dagon Rinpoche. Um, those of you who know this area will know that name. This is him arriving to, actually he, he did arrive to give various teachings on a variety of things such as the 13 Vajrabharavas and a variety of things including Shugden. Um, this is him arriving in the village here, um, just to give you a sense of, if you're not used to this, this is him, this is his handout, this is everyone in the village receiving a blessing. Um, ladies first. Um, and that, and he was there to, in some sense or other, strengthen Shugden practice, or the use of Shugden as a protector in Ladakh in the 1990s, and that was certainly a, a current. Um, now, we get to 1995 and 6. Can I have the next slide? Oh, not that one. <coughs> one of those. Go back. Sure. I will stay there. We'll stay there. Sure, that's a, that's or a... I could skip two ahead if you want. No, no, that's okay. all right. Let's stay where we are. I'll come back to that last slide in which I'll give an opinion. <laughs> um, the, the, what was the effect of the Dalai Lama's teachings in 1996 on this community? Okay. Now, this is important for when we discuss those things about is it a band, is it not a band, all of those kinds of things. Uh, the first thing was, when the Dalai Lama made his announcement, um, I was busy writing up my PhD, which you've read. Oh, really? Okay, I'll have to be quick then. Um, <laughs> and about a few months later, the, the abbot and several of the other monks made the journey to lay to phone me up in my office in, in Edinburgh where I was doing my PhD and said, can you not say anything about Shugden? Get rid of him. But if you say we've got him, we'll have him forever in that book. Um, and so I had to remove 12,000 words of my thesis, um, which is what we do in my job because we protect our informants. Um, they have subsequently got rid of it, and they allow me to actually say these things, so that's all right. But when I went to 1997, and I asked around about this, and I asked a lot of people about this, the first thing they said, and I think this is a crucial kind of point, the first thing they said was, we wish the Shilton supporters community would be quiet. I'm sorry to say that, I'm going to be blunt, you were blunt earlier, so that's fine, in your excellent speech. I'm really sorry, okay. I'll sit down. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 um, 